Good morning and Happy New Year. Oh, TGIG, thank God for God that it's 2021 and no longer the year 2020. Folks, this has been, I don't even know what words to use, but it has been probably a year that none of us will ever forget from... uh, um, from COVID-19 to uh, the presidential elections to, uh, to the Black Lives Matter to uh, the, the, the social unrest. Uh, it has just been one of these years that I think a lot of us are simply hoping is just going to now go away and we can look forward to an incredible 2021. Folks, please know that in the midst of all of this past year, God has been with us. God has been by our side. God has been there helping us, holding us. My hope and my prayer is that the year 2021 is going to be an incredible year, not only for this church, not only for all of the members of this congregation, but for everyone. Please know that that my thoughts and my prayers are with you, and we look forward to, uh, to an amazing, an amazing 2021. With that in mind, um, a couple of things that you should probably know as we have made the decision, or the council has made the decision, that for this month of January, we are going to be going with online worship services. Uh, that's the reason why you're seeing me today. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul is here, so we have two of us that are here, in, uh, and Paul says, ho! So, uh, so we're here today, and we're going to uh, uh, put together our worship service that you will be seeing this Sunday. It's actually Thursday today. It's actually New Year's Eve, and so I guess my saying Happy New Year is okay, because you'll be seeing it Saturday night or Sunday. But it is, uh, it is New Year's Eve, and looking forward to, uh, to a great and a happy New Year. So for the rest of January, we will be having our worship online, um, our first worship service for, uh, for this year in person will be the first Sunday in February, and I believe that's Sunday, February 7th. That is also going to be the date, and this is kind of... Uh, Announcement number one of that, that our annual meeting will take place. It will take place um, immediately after worship on the first Sunday in February. So please mark your calendars for that. Um, we know that our numbers haven't been that great, but we need to have a quorum that day. So, uh, so we hope that, uh, that you come. We have a lot of uh, important things. This has been a, uh, a year where we've had some very important decisions to make. The council has done an incredible job. They truly have. And I am hopeful that the congregation will be here in numbers so that we can have our annual meeting and get ready to uh, look forward to the year 2021. So again, that's that's a first uh, uh, statement that uh, the 2021 annual meeting will be held on the first Sunday in February, February 7th. So please... Mark that on your calendar. Uh, Confirmation group, uh, just an announcement uh, for you. Confirmation begins this coming Wednesday evening. And that Wednesday evening, as I shared with you uh, in the newsletter that will be coming out, but shared with you also in in a note to each one of you that, uh, that it will be Epiphany Day, the day of Epiphany on the 6th of January, and that means that when you get here on that day, each one of you has to tell me a fact about Epiphany. And so if I were you, I'd start looking right now, and, and you may want to not pick the most, uh, the most obvious fact due to the fact that if you're not chosen first, it might already be taken. And so, uh, so make sure that, uh, that you've got at least one fact for that. As, uh, as we're going to have an important year, too, Confirmands, we're going to be uh, uh, having to take a look at, uh, at another season of Lent. And isn't that amazing that here it is, the, uh, 
the first Sunday in January, and I'm already talking Lent. But I need to because the third Wednesday in February is Ash Wednesday, and so we've got things that we need to do. So, so a lot of things coming ahead, folks. We're hoping for a year that might see our numbers start coming back up as we get more and more comfortable, as, uh, as the vaccinations um, are going to be more and more um, easily attainable for us. So, uh, so be with us and, and pray with us uh, during the course of this coming year. Our worship continues with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please take a moment at this time for self-reflection as we confess our sins privately before God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. And now in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hey kids, it's a new year. It's a new year, and as a result of that new year, I'm going to start us off with one of, uh, one of my kid talks. And I am standing in front of our altar. Actually, I'm standing in back of our altar, but I'm standing in front of this incredible manger scene that you see before us. Um, all of these carvings are done in olive wood, uh, and they were done in uh, the city where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born, in the town of Bethlehem. And uh, we've had these with us, uh, Janelle and I, now for several years, ever since the first year that we went over to the Holy Land. And as you see, we've got the whole crew here. We've got uh, Mary, Joseph, the babe. We've got the shepherds. We've got some of the, uh, the animals that were there. Donkey, cows, sheep. We have the three wise men, the three kings, and we have their camels as well. Now, I hate to do this because I hope no one goes, no, don't do that, don't do that. But you know what? There's one of the crews here that kind of sort of doesn't belong. They're there kind of in every manger scene that you've ever seen. In fact, if you go outside the door here at Christ Lutheran, you'll see the three big guys standing there in the outskirts. I'm talking about the three kings. My message today is actually going to be to jump ahead to this coming Wednesday. This coming Wednesday will be the day of Epiphany. And one of the things that is celebrated during Epiphany is the coming of the Magi, or the three kings. But guess what? They were probably not there on the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus was born. In fact, I'm going to borrow them right now. And I'm going to put them a little bit farther away. I would put their uh, camels here, but who knows, maybe the camels were already there. Most believe, most scholars that is, believe that the three wise men, the three kings, the magi, were there at the earliest, maybe three months or so after Jesus was born, and perhaps as much as a year later. Now, because of the scale of these characters, if I were to put them at the right spot and say that it was going to be three months before they got here, they would probably be somewhere over in Lake Benton or Ivanhoe, something like that because it would take them probably that long, given their size, even on Camelback, to get here. But they were important characters, and I, and I, and I talked to you about them because that's what my message is going to be. Um, it's kind of tough to look at that scene and not see the three wise men there. So I am going to put them back. I'm going to put them back so they look wonderfully. They did come. They did gaze upon the Christ child. They did come with their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Let's bow our heads and pray. Kids, if you're out there, uh, you say the words after me, okay? And some of you adult kids could do the same thing. Dear God, we give you thanks for the epiphany of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Gospel text for this day, the day of Epiphany, comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, 
Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, and he said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house... They saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and they presented him with gifts of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this day, we remember the epiphany of our Lord. Lord, we give you thanks that the manifestation of our Lord has been shown. We give you thanks that Gentiles were now made aware of the fact that Christ, the Lord of all, had been born. Lord, we give you thanks for this epiphany, for this understanding, for this revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord and King. All this we pray in his name. Friends of Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may or may not know this, but Epiphany, the Feast of Epiphany, Theophany, and Three Kings Day, all names for Epiphany, is the third oldest and most celebrating tradition and service in our Christian church. The only two other days that compete with Epiphany are Christmas and Easter. But yet we don't celebrate Epiphany, the day of Epiphany. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I don't remember going to any Epiphany worship services. And in my years as the pastor, I have tried, oh, have I tried. I have tried to, uh, to excite congregations saying, you know what, this is Epiphany. This is a big deal. We need to have a special service. Might be a Tuesday night. Might be a Wednesday night like it's going to be this, this year. Might be Thursday, might be Friday, might be Saturday. Every now and then it does roll around on a Sunday. But I think the last time I was at a church and I puffed up the congregation for this huge epiphany worship service, I think I got about 20 people. Not too good. We don't celebrate epiphany but we should. 
One of the things we celebrate with the Epiphany is the arrival of the Magi. The, the, the time and the place that brought these scholars, because that's really what they were. Uh, we love to sing the song, We Three Kings of Orient Are, but if truth be known, they probably were not kings. They, uh, they were of one of the tribes of the Persians. They were of kind of a lesser tribe of the Persians, and they were, in essence, a group of scholars. They were wise men, and they've been called that. And that's a good title for them. They were skilled in mathematics, in the arts. They were skilled in the sciences. One of the sciences that they were skilled in was astronomy. They followed and watched the stars. And when you stop to think about it, it made sense. Because in those days, one of the only constants was probably the stars. It was the one thing that they knew, depending upon the time of the season, would be in one place. And then in another time of the season would be in another place. And it never failed. They followed the stars. One of the things that they learned was that for some reason, whenever there was an important event, an important birth, the birth of a king, sometimes new stars or new formations would come to pass. And it would be a sign to them. We believe that's what happened to those magi, those wise men, as they were watching the stars. That something new, something different came on the horizon. Now we still, to this day, are not absolutely sure what it was. Some suspect that it was Halley's Comet that had come through. Still others, another constellation matched up in the skies. Still other, the ones that, uh, that just took place on winter solstice just a few days ago. The combining of the alignment of Saturn and Jupiter to the point that they looked at as if they were one. And given the time, given the year, given the place, they were probably at the lowest and closest spot that they were going to be in a long time. I hope that you got an opportunity to get outside and see. I really hope, due to the fact that if you didn't, you're probably not going to see it live and in person in your lifetime because uh, as some of the, uh, the people of the know are saying that it's probably not going to come around this closely again for another 800 years or so. Talk about snooze you lose on that one. But they followed that star, that constellation, that comet, whatever it was. because they knew something spectacular had happened. Now there were others that were thinking about this as well. The Romans had an idea also that something was about to happen. King Herod must have had at least some kind of an idea, but he didn't pay it much attention until suddenly, these three scholars, and we think there are three, guess what, we're not sure. Uh, there could have been as much as five or six or seven of them. However, 
We seven kings of... It just doesn't sound the same as we three kings. Plus the fact that, uh, that the numbers have come down to three because of the three gifts that were given. We'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute. King Herod must have had an idea that something was happening. That idea came to play when suddenly these scholars showed up on his doorstep. They asked him, where is this one born king? Now remember, Herod was king. And the idea that there was another king that was going to be born didn't sit well with King Herod. Now Herod was a good guy in some respects. He built the temple of Jerusalem. He built other buildings. He was actually, from time to time, kind to the people. On more than one occasion, when there was famine in the country, King Herod would simply uh, absolve anyone of owing any taxes so that they could use their money for food and to take care of their families. However, King Herod was so suspicious that one of the things you did not want to do was get on his bad list. King Herod, during the course of his reign, prior to or during, killed his wife, his wife's mother, his eldest son, and two other sons. And we may not even know about the relatives and others that he had done away with. In fact, it was kind of a joke that was going around that it was safer to be Herod's pig than it was to be Herod's son. King Herod wanted to know where the Christ child had been born, but it wasn't for any reason that was any good. In fact, we know later in Scripture what he did with the information that he got. It was called the slaughter of the innocents. We'll talk about that at another time as well. The Magi went out. They followed the star. And they came to... Uh, to what is kind of a clue for us. Remember, Jesus was born in a manger. Jesus was born probably, uh, as most scholars believe too, on the side of a cliff or the side of a hill in a cave, a place where they would keep animals. But our scripture tells us that when the Magi got there, when the wise men got there, They came to the house where they were staying. So it may well have been several months later that they arrived. But they did arrive. And they brought with three incredible gifts. Gold. The gift for a king. Frankincense. And myrrh, frankincense, the sweet smelling fumes that would, uh, that would be burned, incense that was burned by the priests so that the prayers would go literally up to heaven. And then myrrh, a bitter herb, an ointment used to embalm, so to speak, an individual who had passed away. Now, I could talk about those three gifts. I could certainly talk more about the wise men, the magi. 
I could talk about Herod. I could talk about a number of things, but what I'm going to share with you are just three kind of simple facts. If you stop to think about it, and please know I'm not the only one who stopped to think about it. So many have. That when it comes to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, most people can be placed into three different categories. The first category is one that would more than likely have King Herod in. Those individuals that want nothing to do with religion. Those individuals who want nothing to do with Christ. Those who have come to think of Christ as simply being a hoax because it can't possibly be true. Those individuals who have come to think that there's nothing good that can happen by following Christ. All the way to the point that they hate this one called Christ. And that was truly the case of King Herod. That group wants nothing to do with Christ because if they had something to do with Christ, they couldn't do some of the things that they did. Because someone who follows Christ, someone who is a Christian, could never do some of those things unless they hated Christ. And then there's kind of a, a middle group of people that are kind of, yeah, okay, so what? You know, it's interesting that when these three magi, these three wise men, were told where to look, and they took off to look, none of Herod's priests or scribes went with. Why in the world not? This was an opportunity to see the king of kings. But they didn't care. It was more important things to do. It was their laws. It was their rules. It was their order that was important to them. Jesus really wasn't that important. I think there's many in our world who still feel that way today. He's not that important. And then there's that third group. We had a lot of folks that we could put in that category. We could put those three wise men, for example, who upon coming to the house where Jesus was, where his mother Mary was, walked in, took one look at the child, and bowed down onto their knees presenting him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh? Or how about those shepherds on the night in which he was born? Who first and foremost could not even believe the fact that they had been told. They went to Bethlehem. They walked into the cave where a tiny babe was laid in a stone manger. They took one look at him and they bowed down. They believed instantly. Or to a young 14 or 15 year old Mary, who when she was told that she was going to be the mother of the Christ child and that this would take place via the Holy Spirit, she believed. She said, Lord, I am your handmaiden. 
Do unto me what you will. All of these individuals kind of had one commonality amongst them. As soon as they heard, as soon as they saw, they knelt down on bended knee and they worshipped him. We have those that can't stand our Lord. We have those that really don't care that it's not important. We have those who on bended knee say, yes, Lord, here I am. Epiphany. This Wednesday. During the course of your day, that day, Stop for even just a few seconds. Think about the greatness. Think about the wonder when people come to find, come to know, and that incredible excitement when they discover this is Jesus Christ. Savior of the world who was born. May God be with you. May God bless you and keep you as we enter into this new year. Amen. Wherever you are at home, maybe this is a good time for a stretch. So I kind of want you to uh, get up if you uh, would like to. As together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we, uh, under normal circumstances, would be accepting our offering. Um, I'm guessing that Paul will probably uh, give you a little announcement at this time on ways that you can continue um, to support um, our church and this ministry.
Please bow your heads in prayer. Gracious God, on this day that we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord, we give you thanks and praise, O oh Lord, for the sending of your Son. We give you thanks and praise for the discovery in our hearts as we come to know, to love, and to embrace him as our Lord and our Savior. Be with us each and every day, O oh Lord, as we try to do all the things that he would have us do. And our Heavenly Father, in the silence of our hearts, we offer up prayers and petitions heard only by you. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. To our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. See the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Worship is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.